What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the vlog, Monthly Mayhem, Ultra Fusion Edition. This is actually like the technical end of, you know, week three. I know I called the Wednesday's video week four. The intro week is supposed to be the intro, not week one, and then I counted up from there, but uh, we'll never get that right. Matt and I both made that mistake. I think he did it on the drag bolt. I did it this time. Whatever. Either way, we're still cranking along. Time is about out. Next week will be the last video you see before the finale at Proline by the Fires. So I've made a little bit of progress since the last time you saw it. Not a ton and mainly just some cosmetic stuff. I did uh, shoot a black base coat onto the side panels and I also have both side panels done now. And then I added a, a little vent area in the front, just kind of cut a hole there, added that same drywall mesh uh, behind it. It just kind of helps break up that panel. It doesn't make that front panel look so big then. Um, I still plan to do graphics on the side, but I wanted to shoot just a little bit of black paint, just kind of get a base on there, kind of break up the look, kind of show you what we're looking at. The other thing was, is you see a spare tire on the back here now, and I'm, I'm not super stoked on spare tires. I don't like them in general. I think I even, you know, maybe talked about it at the beginning and poked a little bit at Matt for some scale points, but, um, you know, I don't know. I'm kicking around the idea. I just, I always think that two twos look a little too big as spare tires. Um, but you know the back of this cage the front end of this truck is long and the back end is short you know that's partly what i was doing with trying to break up the front of that panel um and if anything i'm just trying to use that big oversized spare tire to kind of extend the look of the rear uh, you know i did the profile and proportions of this thing based off the full-size rig um that jordan pellegrino drives but you know things just sometimes need more balancing and he does run a spare tire um Either way, we'll see. Now, the thing is, is I've already welded up the entire cage and I don't want to take it apart and weld more on it. So if I'm going to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take a stub axle and weld it to a plate that I can then uh, find a way to bolt or attach to the backside of the chassis itself so that I can easily remove the entire mount if I want to continue to not run it. If I decide that I want to run a spare tire, that's going to be my path. Uh, one, because it is nice to be able to remove the spare tire. And two, I don't want to have to try and weld or do anything else on this cage while it's already done, painted and ready to go. Um, I just, you know, it, some, com some good comments in the last video. One of them was, you know, seems like, you know, it's been done so fast. Really, we did build this in a, in a fast way. And I seem to be second guessing some of my decisions. And I don't think I'm second guessing. I just know that I had to make some quick decisions that were obvious compromises compared to what maybe I would ideally have done if I had all the time in the world and was just building as I was going. But this one, I just knew I had to make a decision, go with it, live with it and be done. Overall, the look is coming along. I think that, you know, showing the the black panel kind of break up, see how it flows with the hood into the rear, you know, inner fenders, things like that. I didn't get any front inner fenders done yet. I hope to still do that. I'll probably do that when I take this cage off for the last time to get all the electronics wired up, get everything in place, and then um, I'll finish up the front inner fenders. So that's gonna be one of my very last things. Beyond that, it's some final details and of course the actual portion of this that makes it run. So coming down to the end on that as well. Now, if I don't get the motor and everything that I was waiting for, I have a motor here. It's a little bit faster than Matt's so though. It's a 3000 KV rather than the 1850 I was planning on running. So we'll see, um, we'll see what happens. Whatever happens, happens, you know, we'll live with it. I think we can make it, make it work. Matt did find time on Wednesday to get his video done. Work gave him a break enough that he was able to get a video. He missed the vlog, but he got the video done. He showed the paintwork on his new one. He did a weathered technique. This looks super good. That whole truck is an awesome look to it. So different than this one. Just, I mean, completely different truck. The total package that he's got going on right now looks really good. We'll see how that thing holds up during an actual race. And we'll see what that excellent looking detailed cab and paint job rooftop light bar all looks like once we've ran a course. But at this point, as we sit and we kind of look at the build and just see how it's progressed in the time and things like that, 
you know, I, and kind of looking at some of the comments too, just kind of makes me think back a little bit about on how I used to build trucks and things like that. And I do feel extremely lucky now to have the tools and resources and things like that that I have. And, and it's not like it just started like that either. I didn't start in RC in general until 2004, like just before my 21st birthday. And I wanted to get into RC and I was like a lot of people, I was trying to decide between a T-Max and a Savage at the time and just, and then I was just on the internet and ran across some people who were rock crawling and it was the most unheard of thing and you did, that wasn't a thing in RC yet then. So started to really look into it more and there was a small group of people who had put a website together called RC Crawler and I jumped on there and I was one of the first you know like hundred and some odd people on that website and just I got I obsessed about RC cars and RC rock crawlers and I've you know devoted so much time and energy to this segment and so much just time and effort in my life to them I didn't have hardly any tools when I first started. I just bought a tool here and a tool there and spent just a tiny little bit of extra money I had at a time and built things up and just kept working at it. And I taught myself how to draw in CAD. Like I've never taken a single course in computer drawing. I taught myself because I wanted to learn it. I wanted to draw my own parts for RC cars. That's why I learned how to draw in 3D. It was pure for RC cars and then furthered that knowledge over the years mainly for RC cars. I used it in my professional career but it was still stuff I all self-taught and you know then I just continued to grow and I wanted to learn how to weld so I could build cages for RC cars so you know I started with a map gas torch and solder at first and then I decided to buy a little bit better set up a jeweler's torch and then I wanted to buy a TIG welder and then I upgraded TIG welders and you know, it's all of it was just little steps at a time, all for the sake of figuring out how to build these things over years and years and years. When I was looking to buy my first house, I made sure that it had a space that was perfect for building RC cars. And then I got so crazy into RC cars, I decided to sell my house, quit my job as a professional engineer and move to California to work on RC cars all the time. So the amount of time and effort that I put into doing a series like this as a fun challenge is still pretty ridiculous, let alone adding all of the time for shooting and editing, posting and detail, you know, writing descriptions and taking photos and all of that for these things. The whole video and social media side of it just all grew and kept going because you know, I wanted to document things. I liked to document it. I liked to discuss it and I liked to talk about what we were doing with other people who liked to do it as well. And that is why I like YouTube so much because the discussions and the fun and especially the collaboration stuff back and forth, Matt has been just the best to work with. Matt's one of those guys who's just as dedicated to this stuff as I am. You know, I get to work in it full time where he has to balance a, you know, work life and a play life or whatever you want to call this. I get to kind of, mine's got a lot of gray area in the middle there, which I'm super fortunate for. Building the trucks is like 45% of the fun. Talking with people and discussing the builds and things like that is the other 45% of the fun. And like that last 10% is driving them. I have a lot of fun doing that, but it doesn't compare to how much fun I have building them and talking about them and with people who also enjoy it. So with that super long-winded nostalgic moment passing, I just wanted to say thank you to anybody who watches the videos. Thank you to anyone who comments on the videos, good, bad, whatever, you know, even if you don't have something super nice to say, whatever, it's not a big deal. We, we're all on the internet having fun however we choose to have fun. Thank you again, guys. I'm having a blast with this. Thank you a million times to Matt for doing these type of challenges with me. I appreciate all of you guys who watch and add your support in any way. But all of that aside, thanks a million times again for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next week as we kind of wrap this thing up before the big event. And I hope to see some of you guys down in Apple Valley for Proline by the Fire. We'll see you guys on the next one.